What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna build this on off switch with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this cool little on off switch. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build out this fun little on off switch. And you can see when I press this, it kind of moves a little bit because we've created this as a button and it switches from on and off. And when it does, the text up here switches from on and off and changes color. So very simple program, but I've been getting a lot of questions about on off buttons lately. So I thought I'd do a little video very quickly. So I've got a file called flip.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's start out just roughing out this program. So let's create a label. Let's call this my underscore label. And this is gonna be a label. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to start out by saying, I don't know, the switch is on, right? Something like that. Let's go my underscore label dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's comment this, uh, create label. So now let's define our images. So we need two images. I'm gonna call one on and I'm gonna call the other one off. And this is just gonna be a photo image. And I wanna put the file as, and this is gonna be images slash on dot PNG. And let me just copy this whole thing here and paste it in here. And this one will be off. Now this is a relative path. This images directory is in the same directory as our file flip.py which you're both in this C GUI directory. You can see here up here at the top of the screen. So it's C GUI images slash on.png and off.png. And these are just little on off images, little PNG files that I found online. You can use absolutely anyone you want. If you absolutely have to use those, you could probably find them on my GitHub page. The link is in the comment section uh, below for the for my GitHub repository. But really any images you want, and it doesn't have to be an on and off button. Anytime you want to change any sort of button on click to a different image, you would do that here. So, okay, we've got these two on and off. We've got them defined as photo images. Now let's create a button. So I'm gonna call this on button or whatever, <laughs> right? And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the image to equal, to start out with, we'll make it on. And now let's on underscore button dot pack. Let's give this a pad Y of like 50 to really push it down the screen. So, okay. That looks good. Now, the only other thing is our label here. Maybe we wanna start out with different color. So I'm gonna set the text for this to uh, let's say green. Now let's make this font size really big too. So let's go our trusty Helvetica and make it like 32 size. So, okay, and that looks good. And we can put these all on separate lines if you want, so make it a little easier to read, whatever. So, okay. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if this is looking okay. So let's go Python flip.py. So we've got the switches on text, it's green. We've got this button here with an image on it. You'll notice that there's a border around the button. You don't really like that. So we can take that off. We just come over here to our button right here. And let's go BD stands for border equals zero. Let's go ahead and save this and run it to make sure that looks okay. And now we get this borderless button, right? And when we click it, you know, you can see it kind of moves a little bit as buttons do when you click on them. And that's pretty cool. So, okay, we've got everything we really need. Now we just need to, whenever we click on this, we need it to change. So how do we do that? Well, let's head back over to our code. And for our button here, let's give this a command of, and I'm just gonna call this switch. So now we need to create this switch function. So. Let's define our switch function. And let's just define switch. And now what do we wanna do? Well, we need to keep track of whether the button is on or off already, right? So has it already been clicked before? We don't know. So we should keep track of that. And I'm just gonna create a little variable up here at the very beginning of our program to uh, keep track of the button state on slash off, right? And so, this needs to be global because we're going to use it all over the place. So I'm just going to set it up as a global variable and I'm going to call it is on. So is it on? And when the program starts, I want to set this is on to true. 
So we're gonna assume that the button is on when the program runs. And now this is a Boolean, a data type of Boolean, which means true or false. So if it's on, it's true. If it's off, it's gonna be false. So now we can just change this thing around and run a little if statement in our switch function, right? So uh, again, we're gonna be using this inside of here. So I need to set it as global uh, because we want whatever we set this to to be accessible outside of the program so that the next time we click on it, it'll know if it's been clicked or not, right? So global is on. Now let's uh, determine if on or off. So let's create a, an if statement. So we can go if is underscore on. And we don't really have to set this equal, like equal, equal true. You probably could, but just doing it like this means you're saying if it's true. If is on exists, it means it's true. Otherwise it's false. So if is on, if is on is true, then that means it's on. If we've clicked this, it means we wanna turn it off. There's no other reason to click it if it's already on unless we wanna turn it off. So let's turn it off. So let's see, we called our button on button. So we'll set on button dot config. Now we just change the image. So let's go image equals off, right? And that's it. Let's save that and run it to make sure that worked. And this will just do it one time. So is on, we click it, boom, it switches to is off. And we click it again, nothing else happens because we haven't done that part yet. So let's do that real quick. So if it's on, we wanna turn it off else, Right. Otherwise, it's already off. And then that means we want to turn it on. So else we can just turn it on. Right. So if it's true, we want to make it false. Otherwise, it's already false and we want to make it true, basically. Right. Or to put it another way, if it's already on, we want to turn it off. Otherwise, it means it's off, in which case we want to turn it back on. Right. Now, one more thing we need to do is if we've clicked this, that means the state of the button has changed, right? So if we've turned it off, that means we need to set is on the variable to false. And down here, if we've turned it back on, we need to change is underscore on back to true. So if the button is already on, we're turning it off. Then we have to say, hey, we turned the button off. So we set that to false. Otherwise, the button is already off and we're turning it on in which case we need to make the variable say, hey, we just turned it on, it's true. So false and true, that will toggle those around based on this thing up here. So, okay, makes sense. Go ahead and save this and run it. See how this looks. So yeah, the switch is on, boom, it goes off. We click it again, it goes on, off, on, off, on, and just that easy. Very, very cool. Now, we haven't changed this up here. We can do that really quickly. That's sort of a cosmetic thing at this point, but, we called, let's see, where's our label? Our label is called my underscore label. So right up here, whenever we turn this, we can dot config this and set the text equal to. So here we're, we're turning the button off. So let's change this to the switch is off. And let's set the foreground color to like gray, some sort of dark silver of some sort. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing. And let's come back over here. And we want to do the same thing if we're switching it back on. We want this to say on. And we want to turn this color back to green. Okay, makes sense. Pretty simple. Go ahead and save this. Run it one more time. Pull this over. The switch is on. Boom, the switch is off. Everything's gray. Back to green, back to gray. Okay, switch is off here, off there. And we're good to go. So. Really, really easy to do this. Just sort of wrap your head around the idea of Booleans, true and false. We're just creating a variable and if we switch the, the button to off, we change the Boolean to false. If we switch the button back to on, we switch the Boolean back to true, true, false, on, off. And just sort of keep that track of that with global variables that, that work throughout the whole program inside that function and outside the function, and you're good to go. Some people don't like to use global variables. I've still never understood why. Somebody wrote in a book somewhere 20 years ago that global variables are bad because it takes up more memory back when computers didn't have much memory. And now people read that and go, oh, I can't use global variables. Use global variables, it doesn't matter at all. Your computer is like 100 million times more powerful than when the guy wrote that thing 30 years ago and said global variables take up too much memory. So don't worry about that at all. As you know from watching my videos, I don't care at all. I use global variables all the time. So, all right. So that's that on off. Nice little fun project. Very simple. And uh, 
pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code UC1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 100,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.